Okay, so now we have with us uh, <coughs> China Pond Pain Match here from Asian Disaster Preparedness Center, ADPC. And uh, she's already here. She's going to talk about learning from the nature, indigenous knowledge induced flood early warning in Nepal. Thank you very much. So we learned about the earthquake already. Already. So now let's <coughs> talk about the flood. So I wonder that, is there anyone in this room experience of flood before? Yes? How many of you? Oh, okay. I think most of you guys are more lucky because my house was flooded as well in 2011 in Bangkok, Thailand. So it was flood like three months and three meters around that. So all the first floor were gone. So then, how can we cope with that, with the climate change and everything's going on? So <clears throat> today, I'm going to talk about the indigenous knowledge that we work uh, together under the research with the cooperation with the ODI, ADPC, and IDE local uh, partner in Nepal uh, under the BREAST project. Okay. So, have a look at the situation in the flood in Nepal. So thank you for the practical action. This is a picture from them during the flood 2017. You can see that they have a good system, the res rescue team, and they're also aware of the vulnerable group as well. But the climate change is still going on. The intensity of the rainfall is start to uh, getting more uh, intense the flood is getting more often and often. So we have technologies. Thank you. So we have a rain gauge, a rainfall uh, station, and also the manuals, the electricity system, the network from the mobile phone. But it's hard to be always optimistic with these technologies, right? Sometimes when the flood wash away the station, how can we cope with that? Or the electricity system fail, or the mobile phone networks couldn't work anymore. So from now on, I just would like all of you close your eyes a bit and listen. Um, how can I play with this? I know that you guys have been so busy during the whole week of GPDRR. I just want you guys to close your eyes a bit, listen to this. How long that you uh, doesn't have a chance to get close to the nature? How nature is so why even before we born, right? How they cope with that? So then, from our research, I know that my background is also from architecture. Now I moved to hydrology. But then, uh, this is a Frank Lloyd Light, the great architect. So his design, trying to understand the nature and learn from that. Study nature, love nature, stay close to nature. It never fails you. And sometimes it fails, sometimes, I know. However, from the research, we went to talk with the communities. Uh, we went to talk to uh, the community in the Kankai Basin in the eastern part, Kanali Basin in the western part, to hear how they cope with the flood by their own knowledge. So then they tell us, ants, our small uh, creatures, animals. So they told us that if they start to see a lot of huge amount of ants start to move their eggs, that means there is something going on, the big flood gonna come. Because of what? Because of the infiltrations under the soil layer, it start to accumulate more to disturb the nest. So that's what they try to observe with the nature. They also said that if flying ants start to failing down their wings, that means that, okay, the moist in the air start to accumulate more, it's too heavy for them to uh, fly, so they start to relieve their wings. That's what they try to observe, the situation. Look at the sky. 
today I have seen outside it's quite clear sky, so I think we don't need to worry about the rain here. But the community told me that if they see the cumulonimbus cloud, which is look like a um, UFO uh, or a wheel, maybe the, the, the colleagues from the, the WMO know better than me, but they say that if they start to see this type of cloud in the early mornings, it means that, hey, maybe I should prepare, maybe then they uh, dry the clothes and they should like, take it back from the uh, outside, or they will prepare from that. This is going to be like maybe four to six hours uh, ahead to have a, a rain. Or Mematus clouds, it looks like this is getting lower at the atmosphere. This is going to be like a more short-term uh, awareness from them that they try to observe uh, for the rain uh, event. Look at the surface. Surat is like a quite high at the atmosphere. Normally, it's going to not be a rain, but then the people said that from their observation, it's going to be within 36 hours that it might be the rain. And if it's combination with the mamatas and saras together, so then that's going to be even shorter. That's going to be a rain in the future. What else that they use? Forest. They observe from the moist, the smell from the forest, uh, that's going to be more humid. The wind are above from the uh, trees and the upper stream uh, that the river floor start to accumulate more and more. They communicate through the relationship between the uh, neighbors. And then next, they use that indigenous knowledge, their local knowledge to adapt and use to uh, implement their own living life. For example, this is also thank you for practical action. They build up the safe house, a safe place uh, in the communities. You can see that this type of uh, architecture style that opened the first floor at the open space is also quite, you can see often in the Asia, like for example in Thailand as well. So then the river or the water can flow at the first floor and then they can live with the water. Or you can see that even the, they use the banana tree to build up the, the, the boat to evacuate themselves during the flood if there is no rescue to, on time for them. So this kind of thing that uh, they try to adapt themselves. However, indigenous knowledge cannot play only one mantra, right? It should be like a knowledge across the scale from national level, provincials, and to the local level to discuss and talk together to find the gap that how the indigenous knowledge can implement and integrate to the, uh, in the national system of the early warning system to try to supplement each other. It's like a relationship that boyfriend and girlfriend have to meet in the middle somehow, and that's going to work well, I hope. So then um, you can see that if we uh, integrate the internet knowledge to the science information, that's going to enhance and build the community resilience together. And you can see the smile like these uh, three ladies everywhere. So thank you very much. So, any question uh, from the speaker, please? They already like you so much and the presentation, they didn't have anything to say. So, thank you very much. Big clap. Oh, there's a question. Oh, okay. Um, hi, I'm Daisy Hessenberger from the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And we work on projects with a people focus. So about building resilience with nature and with people for nature and for people. And we're very aware of the importance that ind indigenous knowledge plays in those situations and the opportunity there. But it can be quite hard to access. Do you know of any repositories or plans to gather this kind of knowledge to make it a little bit easier for, for projects to integrate and work with the uh, indigenous people? Yes, that also... That also one of my challenge as well. It is quite difficult to access those uh, database that, uh, how to say, correct all the information of the internet knowledge. I think it's still quite new. But then there are uh, 
start to have more the research paper I found in the Mal Malawi case study that most of them uh, use like for example hippopotamus gonna uh, move themselves from the pond if the floods come but to be flying with you I'm also struggling about that as well maybe we can help each other and correct those data to take them. yeah thank you any other reflection or comment or do we have somebody here as well Uh, hello, a nice presentation and very interesting to see that you mentioned you can observe the cloud and other uh, things to do the forecasting. But I think uh, there is already some warning and forecast information from the meteorological observation. Uh, do you have any, have you ever considered to try to access the information from them directly instead of doing this kind of thing by, mo by yourself? Yes, of course, there is like a uh, wolf models and high technologies that uh, can forecast uh, the, 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 the climate, like accuracy way, or it depends on the data availability as well, right? But uh, to integrate the local knowledge or indigenous knowledge is kind of like, there will be not everywhere, right, that have uh, a perfect data base. Or, for example, in the transboundary issues area, the border of the countries, or the area that the community is very poor, like it's really less access or the uh, capacities. Even the knowledge of the people there, sometimes they cannot, maybe we have a good system at the national level. We send the warnings, the good accuracy of the forecast, but then the people even cannot read and understand. So this kind of indigenous knowledge, somehow if we can integrate together, it's kind of like help them to, to observe by themselves and they feel belong because they use that indigenous knowledge to survive before. But however, I understand in your point, this indigenous knowledge somehow also need to validate and see together with the technology and the science information as, as you mentioned, well, together. I think it should work together, not just one or the other. Yeah, thank you. One more quick, please. Thank you. Thanks for the good for, for the thanks for the good presentation. I just want to know one thing: How do the indigenous uh, knowledge holders uh, open up to the new scientific information? Good question. As as I'm doing a research with the team right now, we really see the gap between the indigenous knowledge and the national levels. But I feel like if we, as the researcher, are uh, you guys when you work and we try to initiative. Uh, difference, uh, how to say, everyone is at the difference across the scale at the same table. Or we play at the uh, role as the bridge the gap, link the provincial level, national, and the local level together. Maybe uh, one of the user engagement meetings at the workshop to share this thing together. I feel like the most important from the beginning of the project of the early warning system that gonna enhance the local level, we should uh, initiative all the different scales together. So then it's kind of like a buy-in uh, that feel like belong and understand each other, not, not just like talk with the local and then separately, it, it should be like together. Yeah, thank you.